Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Howard, a real plastic surgeon in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to my first faceliftology video blog. Apropos the name, today we're going to talk about facelifts. As a book collector, I have textbooks from the early 1900s showing a really good facelift done by surgeons in the United States, skin-only facelifts under local anesthesia with before and after pictures that are really good. And it's to this day, those are the standards for which we have to do facelifts today. In 1976 or so, uh, the facial anatomy was studied and in fact, the, a, a structure called the SMAS was identified. The SMAS is the superficial musculoaponeurotic system. And what it is and why it's important is that it lies beneath the skin and is attached and around the muscles of the face. If you operate on the SMAS, you can tighten the facial features that tend to move down and uh, are affected by gravity during aging, and you can elevate and tighten the face by tightening the SMAS. When you do that, the skin follows, and therefore you can do all the work that's tightening on the SMAS, and then just lay the skin down so that it's nice and snug, and the tightness of the face isn't dependent upon the skin. Since 19... 80s, this has been the improvement, the only improvement in facelifts were the ways that we dealt with the SMAS. Until about six or seven years ago, there were no other improvements until we looked at the old plastic surgery cases and realized that you can do a facelift under local anesthesia, but with very modern technology. And the way we do that is we sedate people and then borrow from our oral surgery colleagues techniques of numbing the face um, by injecting local anesthesia and doing blocks. While this uh, is not uncomfortable, it is in, it's extremely important that you don't have a facelift patient under general anesthesia if you want them to get, the well, get well quickly. So we do the blocks, we do local anesthesia infiltration, and then we can see the result the next day. When we come back, we've been able to use shorter incisions, smaller operations, do SMAS work, and have very little swelling after 24 hours. And if patients do what we ask and take care of themselves, we can generally get a patient back into the public, even back to work within one week. I appreciate you joining us today for our first video blog, and I will hope you'll enjoy us for those in the future. Again, this is Dr. Paul Howard in Birmingham, Alabama.